All right, so what we just did was we made a wonderful map in Illustrator. Uh, first, we exported it as an image. Turns out images resize very poorly. Oh, look at how small that text is. Can't read anything. Luckily, New York Times came to the rescue and made a wonderful tool called AI2HTML, which takes your uh, Adobe Illustrator file and converts it into an HTML file. And what that ends up doing is we have this nice map here where this is all text. And when we make it bigger, we make it smaller, it resizes with us. Unfortunately, when we get very, very small, this text ends up wrapping, this text end up, ends up going off the side of the page. And so it turns out that when we have different sizes, it's not enough to just automatically resize the image. Uh, it, we also need to perhaps change the image to format a little bit differently. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're just gonna reposition Los Angeles and New York City whenever we have a nice small map so that we can, uh, you know, we can kind of cram things in a little bit nicer and not have this terrible wrapping going on. So what we're going to do is go back to Illustrator. We don't have to mess with any of these crazy settings over here. All we need to do is make a brand new artboard. So I'm gonna use the artboard tool right here and I'm gonna click and drag. If I were working for somebody, I would probably have a size I'm gunning for. Uh, but I'm just going to say, sure, 452 pixels looks good to me. I'm going to cut and paste all the parts of the map, put them into this new artboard. I'm going to hold down Shift when I'm resizing so that it actually fits on the page well. And now I'm going to add my text. So, Los Angeles. Oh, that word is so long. Instead, whoops, instead, uh, I guess we can call Los Angeles, but we're just going to position it a little bit differently. Dallas, we can just reuse. It wasn't a big deal. Um, New York City, we'll stick it on stick it on the inside here. Or, yeah, we'll stick it on the inside here. That seems a little bit better. Oh, we can even make that map a little bit bigger. Let's do that. A little bit bigger. Great, and we'll just reposition LA, we'll reposition Dallas, we'll reposition New York City. So we, what we want to have happen is when the user has a very large screen, they'll see this whole big spread out map, and they have a smaller screen, they'll see a nice condensed map here. So just the same as we did with our initial export, we're going to save, and we're gonna do file scripts AI to HTML. Your Illustrator file was saved, beautiful. So if we go into the actual uh, output folder, we'll see that it made two different backgrounds, which actually look pretty much the same in this case. Um, but when we refresh, things are a little bit odd. Uh, we see down here, this is the small version, but it's actually kind of big. And then up here, we have the big version that, you know, they, they both kind of stick around. So what we need to do is make it so that as we resize the screen, the large one is replaced with the hopefully small one. In order to figure out how to do this, you have to click around on the AI to HTML page a little bit. Um, what you have to do is go to examples and then read, 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 read. And then right here, it says multiple artboards for responsive web pages. That's what we are doing. Responsive web design is when, say, a big screen and a small screen see slightly different content, and we are using multiple artboards in order to do that. Big artboard for a big screen, small artboard for a small screen. So all we have to do is add our little resizer script to your web page. So let's do that. Click resizer script. And we have to add this script here. This is uh, some JavaScript code. We don't have to know what it means. All we need to do is add it to the web page. So uh, our web page is this output file here, this map.html. We need to open this in a plain text editor. We cannot open this in Word. Uh, plain text editors could be, I'm going to use one called Atom uh, that is available at Adam.io, I believe. Yes. Um, there are also ones like TextMate, uh, Sublime Text, Notepad++. There are a lot of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up Atom. We're going to go File, Open, and we're going to work our way. I'm going to go Desktop, Tutorial, Output, and then I'm going to edit this map.html file. Now, there's all kinds of code in here. Do we need to know what this does? No. Do we need to know what this resizer script does? No. All we need to do is cut and paste this resizer script into here, give it a save, and then go back to our map, refresh, 
And ta-da, our map changes based on how big our screen is. Pretty fun, right? The only issue is that if it gets very, very, very small, it will disappear. There are a few ways to get around this. What we are going to do is uh, we are actually going to add a third version in for when it's very, very small. Because I don't think that someone who has a screen that's about this wide, which is maybe you know 400 pixels or so, needs to see an entire map, right? The fun thing about when you're working with different artboards, when you're exporting in different ways, is you don't have to show the same information the same way. All we changed between this view and this view was the position of the labels, right? So we took the labels that were on the outside, we moved them a little bit tighter, uh, and life was good. But what we can actually do instead is let's make another artboard. So we're going to go to the artboard tool. Uh, we're going to make a new one. Let's only make it, I don't know, about 200 pixels wide, maybe. So a nice, nice small version of it. Make it a little bit taller, though. So we're going to pull in the New York City bubble here. Uh, we're going to pull in the LA bubble here. We're going to pull in the Dallas bubble here. And then maybe we can use the align tool to make them all line up uh, with one another. Put them over here. We're going to label this as New York City. Does it fit? No. We're going to make that M, Y, C. We're going to pull Los Angeles in here. Los Angeles fits OK. And we're going to pull Dallas in at the very bottom. So we want to make sure these are all lined up um, with one another. Great, so this is what our visual is going to look like um, whenever it's very small. If we were better designers, we'd probably space these out uh, a little bit more appropriately, but I think everyone will survive if this is what we publish. Maybe I'll push it a little bit more to the left to get LA uh, away from the border there. Okay, so now we're gonna do the exact same thing we did before where we do file, well, first we save it, then we do file um, scripts, AI to HTML, and once again, it spits all of it out. First, oh no, all three of them have shown up. What do we need? Oh, the resizer script again. So we're going to go back, get the resizer script. If you don't remember where it came from, you go to AI to HTML, um, dot org. You go to examples. Uh, then you click resizer script right here. Oh, oh no, come on back, come on back. Well, I think it's in my clipboard, so I'm okay. So you see it's disappeared from this is map.html, which we had open before. We're going to paste the resizer script in there. We're going to save it, and we are going to refresh. So large size, medium size, and smallest size. Perfect for all of our responsive designs. You can see that these labels aren't necessarily lining up. Probably wanted them to line up but that is just something that we are going to have to fight with uh, in our hearts. But if instead of fighting in our hearts, we wanted to fight uh, by typing things, what we're going to do is the first thing we did with these maps was we set them to be responsive. We set this map to get bigger and smaller based on uh, how big our screen was, right? But now it turns out that that whole bigger and smaller thing, eh, it isn't really working very well. We like this one when it's very small. We don't like it when it's expanded to fill, you know, the gap left between this one here and the smallest size. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back up here and we're going to say responsiveness. Initially it was set as fixed. And what fixed means is this one will, this artboard will always stay the size that we've designed it at. This one will always stay the size we've designed it at. This one will always stay the size that we've designed it at. So let's do this. We're going to save it. We're going to do file, scripts, AI to HTML, one more time, click OK. We're going to have to put the resizing script back in there. Is it in my clipboard? Yes. Save. And refresh. So, as you can see at the smallest size, we get the really, really small one. As we get bigger, we get the medium sized one. And as we get biggest, we get the biggest sized one. They don't resize, so they always look, shall we say, pixel perfect. 
and uh, yeah, they're they're a pretty fun time. So usually, if you're doing responsive design and you are feeling lazy, uh, you can just throw one artboard down, and you can say responsiveness dynamic because it'll get bigger, it'll get smaller. You know, there won't be that many tiers. But if you're designing kind of exactly across several different artboards, and you put a lot of thought into how exactly this wonderful, beautiful artboard will look, and this one will look, and this one will look, uh, it might make more sense to do responsiveness fixed so it won't be kind of stretched out and have your text aligned in different ways. So that is the way to deal with uh, multiple artboards for responsive design in AI2 HTML. Thanks a lot.